Hi, this is Tony, and we're back on the bench. And this evening, we're going to be doing another walkthrough service here on a Kencore model 810 conventional reel. Uh, you know, it's in good shape. There's nothing wrong with it. It looks like it is missing a, a screw down here on the frame, but outside of that, you know, it's it's in pretty decent shape. I recently serviced this reel, uh, hence uh, the walkthrough part. So we're just going to get into all the take apart steps, the cleaning, loop points, the usual thing. I don't know a lot about the company of Kencore personally, but it's... Uh, you know, it, it looks like it's very similar in style to an old school pen reel, essentially, you know, the way that it's designed here. So, got some bits and pieces here. And I was not able to locate a schematic for this, and so I'm just going to kind of lay these pieces and parts out here carefully so that I remember the orientation. But I encourage you to take pictures, you know, if you're working on reels or take videos, things of that sort. Watch this video or any of my other videos. That's what they're there for. Okay, so you know, we've got these pieces and parts laid out here. You know, you want to make sure that you do your cleaning, of course, you know, when you're working on any fishing reel for that matter. Okay. And then we've got some frame screws here that need to come out. Pretty easy to do with a slotted screwdriver. But yeah, if you're into doing reel maintenance and restore, real repair stuff, and, you know, you, you like these videos, I'd encourage you to subscribe to the channel and make sure you hit the notification button. And, you know, if you have questions along the way, feel free to drop those in the comment sections, and I'll try to get back to you as I can. But yeah, I, I like doing these walkthrough videos a lot after I've actually serviced a reel because it just makes it just makes it a lot easier because a lot of the reels that I end up working on, they need a lot of cleaning work done usually. Uh, that's not the case with this particular reel. It's it's actually in great shape. But a lot of reels, they just they end up needing a lot of extra extra care and work, and that really bogs down a lot of the video time. But I do have separate videos on just uh, cleaning and polishing uh, reels and different reel pieces and things like that. And you can check all those videos out on the YouTube channel as well. But yeah, Kencore, uh, it appears to be a Japanese company. It says Made in Japan here on the bottom. So it tells me a little bit about the reel, at least. But yeah, I'd say this is probably a... I want to say like a mid-80s vintage reel, more or less. It's got a plastic spool. And you want to make note that there's two shorter screws that go at the bottom here in these two holes for the base. All right, and these others are a little longer, okay? I like to keep the parts trays nearby, of course, as always. All right, so we've got our handle side off, okay? And before we get into that, we're just going to have a look here. All right, so very simple uh, work to do here. You know, you want to clean out this inside, you know, take some penetrating oil, clean out uh, that whole area right here, you know, with a little, uh, you know, toothbrush or something like that. Okay, clean it up really good. And then uh, when we go back, we're going to go back with some pen precision blue grease and just do a little dab right there on the bearing and then just a little dab there on the clicker tongue that's all you need to do and then outside of that you can take some uh, real oil um, i use uh, pen precision real oil and also real x just make sure they're oils and greases that are meant for fishing reels okay but you can use either um, one of these okay for this purpose I like to do a little bead of oil on these threads you could also substitute this with a little bit of WD-40 or something like that, you know, uh, on these threads, all right, but not on uh, bushings and, and bearings and, and things like that necessarily. Uh, I, I like to try to stick with oil as much as I can with those things, okay? And so I like to keep these threads well lubed with just a little bead of oil, all right? A little bit goes a long way, all right? That section is done. You want to clean off the spool shaft good with your 4 steel wool that you can get at any hardware store, real simple. And clean off that surface and then take your, your real grease and just do a dab there and a dab there, all right, and you're good to go. 
put it back. Okay. That whole section of the reel is done. So we're gonna stick that off to the side and now we're gonna focus on the handle side, okay? Now, there's one thing to note here and I'm gonna point it out right now. You wanna make note of the orientation of the dog spring and this is a little difficult to see here on camera, but there's a little wire dog spring right here, okay? And it needs to go back just right, all right? And, and what that dog spring does is it applies tension to the dog. You can see it clicking there as we turn the bridge shaft here. And you need that uh, to A, not go flying out on you, okay? And then it needs to be in the right orientation when, when you put it back. So you wanna make note of the orientation of this. Take a picture, uh, you know, or w whatever it is that you need to do, make a note. Uh, that, you know, it needs to be just like that, okay? So I recommend that you, you cup this with your hand, and we got four bridge screws that we're going to take out right now, okay? But yeah, this is a pretty basic uh, conventional reel design for this vintage re uh, of reel, per se. We've got four screws here, and these all appear to be partially threaded. Typically, you find fully threaded screws on the bottom, at least with conventional pen reels. This Ken core happens to have just four partially threaded screws all around, so that's just one little thing to note. I do not have any sources for parts for any Ken core models, for that matter. This is the only Ken core reel that I've, I've actually ever encountered. I'm, I'm aware of the, the company, but have never come across a reel made by them yet until now. So take our last screw out here. Sometimes you need the needle nose to pull these out when they're a little stubborn. Okay. Just going to put these up here kind of out of the way. All right. And then at this point, Okay, once again, you want to make note of that dog spring, okay, and see where it's at right there. A right, little, little difficult to see on camera, but we're going to take all this apart now, okay. Got our drag stack and main gear. We've got all these pieces and parts here. And I'm just going to lay these out. You know, once again, I've already cleaned this reel up, and so I'm not going to spend a bunch of time doing all the cleaning and everything, but essentially, you know, I'm going to talk you through it. All you're going to do is uh, you're, you're going to take some WD-40 or some penetrating fluid to in here, take a toothbrush, clean toothbrush, scrub it, clean it, take some Q-tips and clean out, you know, the inside of the bushing there and all these crevices just the best that you can. Go back with your blue grease, just a little dab there on the eccentric roller and on your bearing and you're good to go, okay? There's nothing more you can really do with those pieces and parts here, okay? And it's all in good shape, all right? But the cleaning is key. You really need to do your cleaning, all right? You wanna put all these pieces and parts in a cleaning tray, hose it down with some multi-purpose lube, uh, some WD-40. This is a CRC power lube, it's good stuff. It's a little pricey, but it works well. Liquid wrench, uh, you know, whatever it is that, that you have. Clean these pieces off really well, okay? Use the toothbrushes, use the steel wool, use the uh, Q-tips to clean out the inside of the pinion gear and stuff like that, okay? Same deal here, all right? So we're taking off our drag stack in our main gear assembly, okay? And we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Now you've got a bridge and a bridge sleeve, okay? Now I've got a separate video on how to remove bridge sleeves for conventional reels, for pens anyway, this is really no different. There's a pin in there that, and it needs to come out. And uh, sometimes I can do this right here on the bench, but other times I need to stick it in a vise. I think in this case, I need to put this one in a vise. So I'll, uh, I'll, I'll do that quickly here off camera, just so you can see what this actually does look like and, and how you can service this, but you want to gently put that in a vise. You want to take a, a small nail punch like that, little ball peen hammer or small hammer, okay? And then you just want to tap out that pin 
gently. Just give it a couple of taps, okay? Don't be aggressive with it. You don't want to go breaking it all up, okay? And then take some needle nose, all right? And you should be able to pull that pin out, okay? And this is often overlooked. I, I've been saying this in a lot of videos lately. It's often o overlooked to take this apart, but it's something that you really want to do, okay? You want to clean out the inside there with a Q-tip. Clean this off with some 4 steel wool once again. It's a good abrasive, but it's not going to scar anything. Clean it off the best that you can, and then you're going to go back uh, with some uh, real oil, some real X or some Pen Precision oil, and just do a light bead on there. You can use grease too if you want. I like actually like using oil on this myself. I find it works a little better usually. Okay, but you can use uh, whatever it is that you think is best. But once again, make sure that it's products that are designed for fishing reels. Don't use automotive grease and things of that sort. I don't recommend that. Okay. So we're going to put this back in, tap that back. Now you don't want to mess up these threads that are on here, so try not to mung those up with the hammer, okay? Just try to hit the flat part here, and that needs to be nice and flush, okay? So we're good there. Okay, now we've got our drag stack, all right? And this is a pretty typical drag stack. You want to clean off these washers one by one. It looks like we've got some, some leather washers in here, okay? And we've got a a keyed washer right here. Another leather washer, a metal washer, and then a final leather washer here. And then also note that there is a thin, and it's actually a metal washer, but it's a very thin one, and it actually goes underneath uh, it, it's a spacer washer here that goes on underneath the main gear, apparently. So you just want to make note of that. Okay. And we can actually put that back on right there, like so. Okay. You want to clean out these teeth really well. Uh, you, you know, you can use a brass wire brush for that. Don't use steel. Just use a brass wire brush. Spray it down with some penetrating fluid. Clean those teeth out really, really well. Okay. Get any gum or gunk out of there. Okay. Uh, you know, if you need to soak it in some penetrating oil for a while and then take, you know, like a, a slotted screwdriver and clean them out one by one, sometimes I've had to do that. You know, it's actually that dried up, and that's okay, all right? But get it clean. Get the inside of it clean. You're going to put that back into place like so on top of that spacer washer, and then you're going to clean off all these washers, of course, and you're going to put them back in sequence here one by one. So you got a leather washer you got a metal washer, leather, and then keyed washer, okay, and then another leather washer, going back in there, and then one more metal, and that's it. That's your drag stack, okay? At this point, take a little bit of blue grease and gently get that on these teeth on the main gear here. Okay, you don't want to get it on the uh, washers for your drag stack. You only want it on the gear itself, okay? So that's all good to go there, okay? We've cleaned off all of our pieces and parts, okay? And they're ready to get reassembled, okay? So we've got a couple of springs here, pinion yoke springs. I'm going to put those back. All right, and now we've done our cleaning. All right, sometimes I take some 4 steel wool to this pinion yoke, and that's cool, or the eccentric jack, and then you're just going to go back with just a little bit of blue grease there, and then we've cleaned up our pinion gear, of course. Okay, and cleaned off all the teeth. You can take the brass wire brush to this as well when you're cleaning it. Okay, it goes back like so. And then we're going to rest that on top like that. And then we got our eccentric jack. It's all cleaned up and ready to go. And that's going to rest on top. Like so. And this kind of roughly holds it in place. You just don't want to go jiggling it all around. Okay. 
And then at this point, I kind of like to hold it down with my thumb like this and so it doesn't really go anywhere. Okay, now here's that dog and that dog spring that we were talking about. Okay, very important that we, we get that back in correctly. Okay, and this is where it gets a little tricky now. So we need to put the main gear back in and the bridge assembly and the drag stack first. Okay. And we're gonna kinda we're gonna kinda do a couple of different things here all at the same time, more or less. We're gonna we're gonna get these pieces lined up here. Like so. And then what we have to do is we have to get the dog in the right position here. Actually, now that I think about it, we have to get the dog spring in first, I believe. It's pretty small and it's pretty it's pretty tricky, okay, but you should have it resting in there like so. Okay. Then you're going to put this on top of it here. Like so. Then you want to take one of these screws to go through the two of them to hold it in place. Okay. Don't forget to hit these with a little bit of penetrating fluid. These screws, and we're just going to do a little bead of oil on those threads there for good measure. Okay, and we're going to feed one of these screws from underneath and through the two pieces, both the dog and the dog spring. Okay, so that we have that ready where it needs to be. And then this is kind of tricky, but you have to kind of pull and work this dog spring around and kind of underneath the dog here, so to speak. It's not the easiest of things to do, but it can be done. So you just kind of get that to work its way around and you push it down. Okay, and then you kind of push up on that dog a little bit and you should be able to get a snap on there. Okay, and it should sound like that. If it doesn't, then something's probably not lined up right, and you need to you need to go back and see what it is that's amiss. But that dog spring on this particular reel is a little tricky. Okay, you just need to kind of know what to look for. Okay, so we'll put the rest of these screws back in. We've already hit them with a little bit of real oil on the threads. So we'll go back and sequence here. And we want to kind of distribute this back and forth across the bridge here. So I've done that screw and now I'm going to go to this top one. And then I'll go back here to this top one. Don't over tighten these, okay? Because you don't want to crack your side plate. But we just want to distribute the tension accordingly across the whole bridge here, basically. Make sure this is still working right, and it is. So now we'll just do like an eighth of a turn here, basically, eighth to a quarter, okay? So once we've cleaned up all these pieces and parts, put the sleeve back. There's a sleeve cap that goes on top, and then we've got some tension washers here on both sides of our star wheel, okay, for the drag system. And I actually like how how this, uh, unlike some of the older pen models, uh, you know, it's got these flat flat tabs here on the on the wheel, which is kind of nice, makes it kind of comfortable to work with. Now this can be tricky sometimes. Sometimes uh, you got to take like a there's, there's a slot in here that you can rest a stubby screwdriver in to kind of get this started sometimes. And I find sometimes that's helpful. 
but not all reels uh, are made the same, of course, and not all of them necessarily have that slot where you can do that. So that's kind of a nice feature. Just tighten this up a little bit more. We'll put our, our tension washer in here. Clean up our handle. It's a nice orange Bakelite torpedo style handle. And this gives you the option. You know, this is a convertible option, which is cool. So, you know, if you wanted more torque and more, uh, you know, power, you could put it down here and then you've got, you know, extra, you know, torque that way. And then if you just wanted just the standard, you could put it in that hole, uh, you know, which is the way it came. And so I'm going to put that back in like that. But that's a nice feature to be able to have that. Normally you got to pay extra for that on a lot of reels to get to get that extra extra force that you that you're looking for. Now you got to get this lined up here, so you got to turn that handle nut just right. Get that lined up with your set screw, okay? Don't forget to do a little bead of real oil on that set screw. We're gonna put that into position. Okay. So that's great. Now we can slap this back into position on this side of the reel. I'm going to line up some holes. Remember, we've got two shorter screws that go at the bottom. Let's get one of them lined up here for starters. Just kind of go back and forth here. So we're just going to finish snugging up these screws here and this reel should be good to go. But I like to kind of bounce back and forth with the screws just to distribute the tension accordingly across the plate in the, in the rings here. So just kind of bounce back and forth. Don't over tighten. Okay, so it's a pretty smooth operator so far. Let's check our free spool. It's hard to see because it's a black plastic spool, but it's spinning real nice and freely there. So test out our drag. And that drag is really nice and smooth, actually. It's working quite well. Make sure you back off your drags, though, when you're not using the reel, okay? Because when you leave it tightened, that applies tension to the drag stack. And that's how your leather washers and your metal washers kind of start to fuse together over time. And they crack easily and things like that. Try out our, our clicker. 
clicker's in good shape. So there you have it. That is the Kencore Model 810 conventional reel all spritzed up and ready to go. So thanks again for watching. This is Tony with Back on the Bench. If you like the video, please do give it a thumbs up if you'd like to see more. Please subscribe and make sure you hit that notification button. And if you have any questions, please feel free to drop those in the comments section and I'll uh, try to get back to you. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.